Thank you for your purchase of Ferno Emergency Patient Handling Equipment. Ferno is the market leader in providing innovative, high-quality ambulance cots, stretchers, transport chairs, backboards, immobilization equipment, and rescue supplies. Ferno provides the most complete line of immobilization products for every step of the immobilization process in any situation. Primary immobilization devices include backboards and scoop stretchers, as well as restraints, sea collars, and head immobilizers, needed for the highest level of patient care and safety. The following video provides instruction on the correct use of your Ferno product. For additional information and questions, please contact your local Ferno dealer. Ferno provides a variety of cervical collars, including the Ferno Wislock and Philly C collars. When approaching any patient with suspected spinal injury, a cervical or C collar should always be applied first. It is important that a C collar be only applied with the patient's head held in neutral alignment by a second provider. The Wislock is designed to be sized as it is applied to the patient. There are three size positions, regular, short, which is the correct position for most adult patients. PD, thick neck, for pediatric patients and patients with a very short neck, low, well-defined occipital area, or back of the head. And tall, for patients with long necks and no defined occipital area or a flat back of the head. If you are unable to decide the best position, leave the occipital support in the regular short position. To apply the C-collar, slide the pre-sized occipital support behind the patient's neck with the mandible support in the lowest unlocked position. Center the mandible support under the patient's chin so that their chin does not extend past the edge of the mandible support. Fasten the hook and loop fastener loosely. Unlock the cam and move the mandible support upward until slight resistance is felt. Do not hyperextend the patient's neck. Lock the mandible support by pushing the cam lock lever up, flat against the adjustment post, until the lock snaps into place. While holding the mandible support with one hand, tighten the whiz lock by releasing the hook and loop fastener, pulling the collar snug, and refastening. The whiz lock is now properly applied to the patient. To apply the Philly C collar, select the appropriate size of Philly C collar. Slide the occipital support behind the patient's neck with the mandible support facing up. Center the mandible support under the patient's chin so that their chin does not extend past the edge of the mandible support. Now bring the hook and loop strap around the back of the patient's neck and secure to the hook fastener. Before attaching the hook and loop strap, make certain the patient's head and the collar are in neutral alignment. If the chin is not sufficiently supported, tighten the collar. If additional tightening results in patient extension, select a smaller size of Philly collar. You may now proceed with immobilization as needed, following local protocols. Ferno offers a variety of backboards, including the Millennia and the Najo series. Before placing a backboard in service, require all personnel who will work with the backboard to read the manual. Inspect the backboard and confirm that it has been received in good order and is free of cracks, crevices, and punctures. If the backboard is fitted with speed clip pins, check that all pins fit solidly in place and are free of cracks or damage. Install all patient restraints as outlined in the restraints manual. Follow these guidelines for use. A minimum of two trained operators are required to use the backboard. Additional help may be needed when lifting heavy patients. Stay with the patient at all times. Always apply any appropriate cervical or extrication collars needed for head and neck support. Follow your agency's protocols and procedures for applying the backboard to the patient. Always secure the patient on the backboard with restraints. Confirm that restraints are properly configured and buckles are securely fastened. If using restraints with speed clips, confirm that they are securely attached to the speed clip pins. Use as many helpers as needed to safely lift and carry the weight of the backboard and patient. If you place the patient backboard package on a cot for transport, 
secure the patient backboard package to the cot using the cot restraints. A scoop stretcher may be used in place of a long backboard for patient immobilization. Before applying a scoop stretcher, adjust the stretcher length by moving the lock pin lever on each side of the frame to the unlocked position. Pull the foot section to the desired length, return the lock pin levers to the locked position, and push or pull the foot section until it locks in place. To apply the stretcher to a patient, separate the stretcher halves and use local protocols when carefully moving the stretcher under the patient. To separate the stretcher halves, unlock the twin safety lock coupling at each end of the stretcher by pressing both levers of the twin safety lock and then pull the coupling halves away from each other. Position one half of the stretcher on each side of the patient, aligning the center of the headrest area with the patient's nose. Use local protocols to carefully work the stretcher halves under the patient until the end couplings meet. Use care to avoid pinching or pulling the patient's skin, hair, or clothing while working the stretcher halves into place. Next, align the right and left halves of the head and foot couplings and push them together until the twin safety locks engage. Check that the locks at both ends of the stretcher are fully engaged. You may also apply the scoop stretcher in a V configuration. Open only the foot end coupling. Position the stretcher with the patient's head at the coupled head end of the stretcher. Use local protocols to work the stretcher inward and under the patient, working from head to foot until the coupling halves at the foot end meet. Push the foot end coupling halves together until the twin safety locks meet and lock. Fasten and tighten all patient restraints. The Ferno Model 770 Fast Trap Restraint System is a system of hook and loop fastening straps that provides fast, easy restraint of a patient onto a horizontal immobilization device such as a backboard or scoop stretcher. The Fast Trap features color coded straps for easy application and is adjustable to accommodate pediatric and adult patients. The Fast Strap also includes wrist restraints to keep the patient fully secured. Do not use the fast strap to secure a patient on an ambulance cot or for vertical extrication. Use the appropriate restraints rated for those situations. Follow these general guidelines when using the fast strap. The fast strap is for professional use only. Be sure all operators read the manual. Use the fast strap only when it is in good condition. Practice using the fast strap before placing it in service. Follow approved emergency patient handling procedures to properly secure and transport the patient. To unfold the fast trap, pull the strap open and lay the straps down. To orient the fast trap to the patient, lay the fast trap, pile side up, along the center of the patient's body with the straps positioned across the patient. The black V strap goes over the shoulders. The orange chest strap goes over the chest. The yellow pelvic strap goes over the pelvis. The green thigh strap goes over the knees. The gray ankle strap goes near the ankles. The fast strap has three adjustment points along the center strap. Use these adjustment points to properly size the fast strap for the patient. The adjustment points are located between the chest and pelvic straps, between the pelvic and thigh straps, and between the thigh and ankle straps. To lengthen the center strap, select an adjustment point and lift the top D-ring. Pull the center strap through both D-rings. To shorten the center strap, lift the top D-ring and pull the tab through the D-rings. When securing the patient, keep the center strap centered on the patient's body. To secure each strap, feed it through a handhold or other fastening point on the transport device. Bring the strap around the fastening point and press the strap onto itself to secure the hook and loop fastening material. You can secure the patient's wrists at their side using the pelvic strap or on top of the pelvis using the wrist restraint. Snug the V-strap across the patient's shoulders. As needed, place padding, such as rolled blankets or towels, to fill gaps between the shoulders and straps. Follow approved emergency patient handling procedures to lift and transport the patient in a horizontal position only. Be sure to clean and disinfect 
and allow the fast trap to dry before storing it. To fold the fast trap for storage, lay the fast trap on a flat surface. Fold each half strap to the center and press it to itself to engage the hook and loop fastening material. Stack the gray ankle strap on the green thigh strap. Stack the ankle and thigh straps on the yellow pelvic strap. Stack the ankle, thigh, and pelvic straps on the orange chest strap. Lift the body straps and the black V straps until they meet above the center of the fast trap. Secure the straps with the storage strap. Store the fast trap in a dry place. The Ferno Model 445 Universal Head Immobilizer is designed to immobilize a patient's head. The head immobilizer is vinyl coated and is both waterproof and buoyant. It does not interfere with medical scanners and may be left in place during x-rays, MRI, or CT scans. The head immobilizer can be used with a Ferno scoop stretcher or with a full-length backboard equipped with cervical device slots or a center hole at the head end. Follow these general guidelines when using the head immobilizer. Only qualified EMS personnel should assess the patient's condition and determine the proper procedures and equipment to use. The head immobilizer is for professional use only by a minimum of two operators. One operator should always support the patient's head and neck while the other operator applies the head immobilizer. To attach the head immobilizer to a backboard, separate the components of the head immobilizer. Position the base plate with fastening strips facing up at the head end of the backboard below the center hole if present. If the backboard has slots for cervical devices, thread the side retention straps through the slots and then secure the side retention straps to the fastening strip on the base plate. If the backboard does not have cervical device slots, wrap the side retention straps under the backboard and secure the side retention straps to the fastening strip on the base plate. If the backboard has a center hole, insert the top retention strap through the center hole and loop it over the end of the backboard. Then, thread the strap through the plastic buckle and secure it to the hook and loop fastener on the strap itself. Verify that the base plate is firmly in place on the backboard. Transfer the patient onto the backboard using approved EMS transfer procedures. To attach the head immobilizer to a scoop stretcher, separate the head immobilizer components and unfasten the retention straps. Transfer the patient onto the scoop stretcher using approved EMS transfer procedures. With two trained operators, slide the head immobilizer base plate under the patient's head and onto the scoop stretcher head panels. One operator must support the patient's head and neck while the other operator applies the base plate. Wrap the side retention straps under the head panels of the scoop stretcher and secure them to the fastening strips on the base plate. Loop the top retention strap around the scoop stretcher's main frame tube. Then thread the top retention strap through the plastic buckle and secure it to the fastening strip on the strap itself. Position the patient on the backboard or scoop stretcher so that their head is in the middle of the base plate. Secure the patient onto the backboard or scoop stretcher with the restraints provided with the equipment. If the patient is on a backboard, place the straight side of the support pads against each side of the patient's head. The end of each pad should touch the patient's shoulders. The support pads may be secured at an angle on the base plate in cases when the patient's neck is twisted or angulated. If the patient is on a scoop stretcher, place the angled side of the support pads against the patient's head. The end of each pad should touch the patient's shoulders. When possible, align the holes in the support pads with the patient's ears. This helps the patient hear the operator and allows the operator to check the patient's ears. Center a forehead chin strap on the patient's forehead with the fastening strips facing up. Loop each end of the forehead chin strap through a D-ring. Tighten as needed and secure the ends to the fastening strips on the forehead chin strap. Follow local EMS protocols to determine the use and placement of the second forehead chin strap. 